I want to talk today just a little bit about the the Marian octave that we really just finished up that we yesterday marked the end of. It started with the of course the great feast of the Assumption. On that day, it will, we we think of Our Lady being assumed into heaven and how glorious that was. That uh, that she goes not only soul but bodily into heaven. But it, it's an interesting concept as to what happened at the end of her life that the, the spiritual writers don't even all necessarily agree on either. Some of them talk about dormition of Our Lady, where, where she falls asleep. She doesn't really die, but she falls asleep and then is and is so um, asleep herself that uh, that the, everybody around her believes her to be dead, and then soul and body all at once she is taken up to heaven. This is a perfectly fitting end for Our Lady because of the fact that death, as punishment for sin. But Mary, she never knew sin. She was conceived without it. She was full of grace her entire life long. And so death wasn't due to her. And so that simple falling asleep seems a very good and logical conclusion to her life. As it was said of Adam and Eve, that death was not supposed to be their end either, had they not fallen in the, in the garden then they wouldn't have died. They would have lived their lives in the earthly paradise of Eden until they were good and ready to, to leave earth and to go back to heaven, and God would have taken them straight away without any pain, without any punishment or, or, or separation whatsoever. But they did sin, and so death was their punishment. So Mary, as some of the spiritual writers talk about, perhaps fell asleep into this deep slumber um, and was, uh, was then assumed after a short period of time, body and soul together to heaven. Some others talk about that she did die, some of those spiritual writers, and that it wasn't a death, though, that was necessarily, you know, a painful death. It was a very peaceful death. It was, and it was not necessarily... Um, a death that uh, that was like a death that we would perceive it to be, like one where we kind of we have hope, but we do still have that little bit in the back of our mind of wondering, did I do enough to save my soul? That I that I that I perhaps you know that I am I completely free of sin? Am, have I done all that I could to sanctify myself? Mary knew one hundred percent that she would go to heaven. And the, the reason why this also makes sense, that she might die as well, and why some a lot of the spiritual writers talk about this, is because of the fact that she was following Christ in every way possible. So, uh, Mary of Agreda writes in the, the City of God, that uh, she, as part of the, the revelations to her, that according to Mary of Agreda, Our Lady when she was coming to the end of her life, she was visited by our Lord. And she talked to him, and, and Christ gave her the option. Told her that, that she's done well, everything uh, is completed, her time on earth is done. And uh, it's up to her. Because death is not due to her, she could either just depart earth, body and soul together at once, or she could undergo death too. And she looked at Christ, and she, and she said to him, You, who are completely without blame, willingly underwent the pains of death for yourself. It's only fitting that I follow after you in all things and choose the same, so I choose to die. So according to Mary of Agreda and many of the other spiritual writers, she died. This is not something that the church has definitively taught. But either way, we look at it, and it was, a, it was an event filled with the absolute beauty of a soul and a body destined for the highest points. To the perfect end of their creation, they attained paradise for eternity. And it reminds us that's our end, ultimately, ourselves. We, like Mary, 
are created beings. We, like Our Lady, are made for one thing and one thing only. We're made for heaven. We're made for paradise. Our soul is meant to join our God in heaven forever. And one day, at the end of the world, our body is meant to join back with our soul there as well. Everything we do in this life is a connected action. I don't just act as a soul. I don't just act as an animal and, and with bodily actions. They're together. My reason and my being, they, they act as one. And so therefore, at the end, the consummation of everything, my soul and body are rejoined back together. And it's fitting that that end, if I'm striving for it in my life, is meant to be paradise for eternity. Every one of us has the ability to get there. Every one of us is, is born and destined for that. It's up to us to do what we have to to get there, though. Which brings us, ultimately, to the end of that octave. It's an interesting octave, the octave of the Assumption. When you look at the other octaves of the Church, what do they have? You have the octave, you have the feast day itself, and you have eight days in which you either sit, celebrate that Mass, or commemorate it, at least. And then the last day is sort of another feast day of the same feast again. But the Assumption is different. The Assumption, it starts with the Feast of the Assumption. You have those days during the octave in which it is commemorated again. And then on the eighth day, you have a whole new feast. You have the Immaculate Heart of Mary instead. That is there because of the fact that we find in Our Lady the source of grace. For us to achieve that end, that 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 goal of paradise, she is the vessel of, of salvation. She is the, the to which God came to earth, redemption came to mankind. She's the means by which we go back unto Him. Any time we see in our life the struggles, the difficulties that that come our way, as inevitably they do, where is it that we turn? Because we have to ask ourselves that. Do I try to do it myself? Do I try to fix the problem on my own? Do I try to persevere in something difficult on my own? Do I just kind of grin and bear it and push forward, slip and fall, get back up again, dust myself off? Or do I realize these are supernatural actions? Virtue is a supernatural action. And so I need to cooperate with grace. I need supernatural aid for that end. And so for me to get to heaven, I have to go through the same gate as Christ came into prayer. Through that loving heart of Our Lady, Our Blessed Mother. So it's so fitting, those two feasts working together. It gives us our goal and it gives us our means. And so now, each and every day of the month of August, we continually celebrate that means of salvation. The entire of the thing is dedicated to the Immaculate Heart. And we're reminded that it doesn't just end on August 31st, but every day it should start with us turning to her and finding that source of grace we need for today's battle to be successful in ultimately reaching the end. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.